uh, grant or technical assistance opportunity. Let me uh, share my screen. One second. OK, can you all see my presentation? Yes, so these are grants, but they're actually technical assistance. And I'll go over a little bit more about what the differences are today. Um, we're going to be discussing two um, free no cost services that the DEP will be providing. One of them is a stormwater utility feasibility study. And the second one is resilience planning for Ida affected uh, municipalities. Um, but the reason I get excited about this opportunity is it specifically addresses flooding and uh, stormwater maintenance, um, which lack of maintenance can lead to flooding. So um, let's start with who we are. This is our organization. We're part of the DEP. And uh, Wins Mazai is our assistant commissioner for the watershed and land management. Anika Andrews is the director for the Division of Watershed Protection and Restoration. And I'm here. Um, I like to call myself the Maharani, which means the queen in Indian language. Uh, Maharani of uh, flooding issues and stormwater issues. And we have Gabe Mon, who's the uh, bureau chief for the Nijipti's program on the water quality management. And again, I welcome you all to this session today. A few housekeeping issues. I definitely want to thank you for showing interest and seeing all of you here today at this webinar. This is being recorded just so you're aware, but we will make the recording available for you on our grants website. All the information, anything you need, including the files I try to attach to you are all located on our grants website. Um, I've given you the link here. Uh, you can just uh, Google uh, WLM grants uh, website and you should be able to get that. Uh, we are keeping attendance. Um, but I'm not sure that we'll be able to get all your email addresses. So the, and if you want specific information, I've given you our email address, which is stormwatergrantsinfo at deb.nj.gov. Um, okay, thank you for the link. And I ask you all to please mute yourself because this is a large group of audience and questions and answers will be taken after the three presentations, but please put your name when you post your chat. Thank you very much. OK, moving right along. OK, this is the agenda for today. Introductions done. Number two, what is it that we're offering? It's kind of a grant, but it's actually called a technical assistant. But either way, it's, it's like no cost to you. So I'll go over what they are. I'll go through the purpose of why we are making these two offers, where the funding is coming from, and um, eligibility requirements, like who can apply. Next, I'd like to go through um, how we're going to go through the selection process. What are the priorities uh, we'll be using in order to make the selection process? And then the most important thing is how do you uh, respond back to us. Where's the mechanism for how you respond? Um, and then after my talk is done, we have a couple of two experts in the field. Uh, Sherry Presig will be getting into more details about what a stormwater utility feasibility study is and the steps in order to create one. And then Megan Levy will be going through the resilience. Uh, technical assistance document. And last would be uh, questions and answers. So, what is a technical assistance? In a normal grant, we would take a pot of money and we would give it to somebody and say, here, take this money and go do this, this, and this, 
or we are actually the other way is we say, OK, do this, this and this, and I will we'll give you the pot of money. But here with the technical assistance, the DEP will hire a professional consultant on your behalf. And we will create these or the consultants will create with the guidance from the DEP um, to to offer you these two products and the companies that have been pre approved um, on behalf of DEP to provide this product is pretty major players. As you can see, I posted their name below. Um, DEP will select one or two or I don't know how many we need, but we will select a professional consultant uh, based on a mini bid that we will conduct. But before we get there, we need to know who are all interested. We need to know the people that want to have a stormwater utility study done for them or the resilience planning done for them. And, and that's your job today as a municipality or a county or a utility authority. It, it's you have to let us know by um, August 24th that you're interested in having one of this done for you. And I will definitely go through in more detail what these are and what the benefits of getting this uh, technical assistance is. OK, where's the money coming from? Three million dollars of the corporate business tax uh, funds have been set aside for specifically for uh, these two uh, technical assistants. And it breaks down as follows. Two million will be allocated to the stormwater utility feasibility study, and one million will be allocated to the technical assistance for resilience planning. Now, there are 564 municipalities, 21 counties, and I don't even have a number on the number of other eligible entities like utility authorities and planning authorities, uh, but it's a lot of people. And uh, $3 million is not going to cover everybody. Um, how many studies do we think we could do? I, I guess it really depends on who applies, how big they are, uh, whether or not they've already done some studies to start with. But um, <clears throat> our rough estimate would be that we think we can do between a dozen uh, approximately around a dozen or more, maybe even like 18 um, stormwater utility feasibility studies. So that's like um, that many entities that could get selected and, and could be eligible for this study. As far as the resiliency planning, again, it depends on the area, the size and uh, background information. Um, I could see us, you know, funding maybe as much as even 10 entities. So that's still a lot of lot of people um, that could directly benefit from this technical assistance. OK, I'd like to uh, cover a little bit more about the stormwater utility uh, feasibility study or, or even um, go through some what a stormwater utility is. So we we know that the flooding and the impacts of flooding is one of the biggest threat to the residents of New Jersey for their health, safety, and welfare, as well as for the environment. But in addition, um, I'm sure you've all noticed that the flooding intensity has been increasing, and it's been increasing due to climate change and um, in fact, the rainfall amount, the precipitation itself has been increasing quite a bit. And the impacts of flooding are much worse in areas where there's poorly managed stormwater infrastructure. Um, pipes and inlets can get blocked and clogged up and um, back up the floodwaters. Um, a lot of the pipes built a long time ago are too small and they can't. Um, carry the increased precipitation that we are seeing. And for the local governments, they face a significant challenge because 
they, they have to be able to find effective stormwater management solutions and at the same time be able to fund that. Money is always a big issue with, with stormwater management. And this is the reason that the governor in 2019, Governor Murphy, signed into law Clean Stormwater and Flood Reduction Act. And this allows for the creation of stormwater utility at the local level. And once a stormwater utility is created, the purpose of that is to provide a stable revenue stream, particularly one that's specifically dedicated to stormwater and stormwater maintenance, stormwater repair, stormwater improvement, enlargement, and basically just to manage the stormwater on their systems. Um, our office, uh, under the guidance of Gabe Mann, um, put a lot of research into how one goes about creating a stormwater utility, and that's located on our uh, guidance uh, page, which I've posted here for you. And um, I would I would encourage all of the uh, um, the counties and the townships and the utilities to please go check that website out, the Stormwater Utility Guidance website, to get some more information of, on the benefits of forming a stormwater utility. Now, who can actually form a utility? And by the way, these are also the people that are eligible for this uh, grant slash technical assistance. So the eligible entities are municipal government, county government, county or municipal sewage authority, county or municipal utilities authority, as well as a county improvement authority. So these are the people that are eligible and these are the people that are eligible for applying for this technical assistance. Now, now once we get all the responses, uh, we have the difficult job of selecting, um, you know, the few people that can benefit from this study. And when we start evaluating the proposal, we are going to prioritize a few key information. The first one is um, we will be prioritizing overburdened communities. We will also be prioritizing areas with the largest population or people that apply um, with a regional approach. It could be several municipalities joined together to form a regional plan, or it could be, you know, a utility, but a regional approach would be good. We will also prioritize um, those entities that have already started some sort of a feasibility study, but just require some additional funding to complete it or bring it to its conclusion of actually getting a stormwater utility started. So I got a pop quiz for you. I said largest population. Can anybody put in chat um, the municipality that they think is the largest? in New Jersey in terms of population. Um, anybody know? Pop quiz. And, I would, and also I'd like to see if anybody knows what the smallest municipality is in New Jersey. As far as the largest goes, you know, you can give me one, two or three or whatever you know. So if you know it, you know, post it. Na, 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 na. Na 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 na. Ten seconds. Yeah. Hi. This is um Intia, third supervising engineer from the city of Newark. Yes. So we are. I'm very keen. You know, keenly observing your your presentation, which is very good and helpful. So I would be one of the key uh, applicants to work on this direction. Just to let you know, because Thank we are you. having so many problems in our storm system. I understand. OK, so like coming back to my presentation, I see a lot of answers here. And um, I did see Newark. So whoever posted Newark, you were on the mark. Second would be Jersey City. 
The third highest population would be Patterson. And I did not see the correct answer for the smallest. The smallest township in New Jersey is Walpack, New Jersey, with a total population of seven people. OK. They've actually been um, going down in population in the year 2000. They had 41 people in 2010 census. They had 16 people and in 2020 it was just seven people, four houses. And when they have a town hall meeting, it's usually held in somebody's kitchen, I bet. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I've certainly added that place to the list, Wallpack, to my list of places I want to visit. Apparently, they get a lot of tourists um, because it is a historical town. Just not a lot of people want to live there, apparently. So just a little fun fact. OK, coming back in. How do you show interest? How do you show us that your uh, or the application? How do you apply for this wonderful technical assistance? Well, you'll be happy to know that there are no forms to fill out, no registration to do, no piles of paperwork. All we need from you is a letter. A letter that should be sent to our email address, which is very easy to remember stormwaterutility at dep.nj.gov. And in this letter, tell us how you meet eligibility. Maybe you're a township or a municipality or a utility authority. Now, the next one is very important one. That is, give us some narration that shows how committed you are in forming a stormwater utility. This is a very important. We want a committed partner, partnering with DEP, being helped by our professional consultant. And in addition to that, let us know what steps you've already taken towards the process of forming a stormwater utility. Definitely attach any preliminary study. And um, we would like to see uh, this letter be signed by a principal, executive officer, or a ranking elected official. And we would like to get the contact information for the key people responsible for seeing this through, as well as contact information for all of the uh, government employees that will be participating in this study. Now, if you're a county or a municipality, we already know what area you cover. But for some of the sewage authority or the utility authorities or the ones that are uh, doing the regional approach, we kind of like to get a, a map that shows the area that you're thinking about. So now I'd like to move on to the second offer from DEP, the second technical assistance. And this is planning for resilience because we know that climate change is go global, but the impacts are locally felt. This is a, a photo right here from New Jersey in North Jersey parking lot of a grocery store that was flooded during Hurricane Ida. And when floods occur, they, they have a huge uh, impact on the infrastructure and the natural resources. And it's very important to include uh, planning efforts that take into account a uh, future condition, not just the current flooding situation, but also the future. So this is what we're offering, technical assistance to form um, a planning document for resilience. Let's just take a look at what happened during Hurricane Ida, which uh, came through New Jersey on September 1st. 2021, there was widespread havoc all over New Jersey. Now, what was interesting about this particular flooding event is that much of it was due to poor uh, stormwater infrastructure. Um, in fact, a good amount of people that got flooded were not even mapped to be in the floodplain, but when that much water came, um, the, the pipes and the inlets were overwhelmed. 
and backed up water into areas that were not even mapped to be in the floodplain. Now, we know the rainfalls have been increasing. Um, there's been a 10% increase in the last 20 years, but based on a Cornell study that was done specifically for New Jersey, um, rainfalls are expected to increase 50% by the turn of the century. That's a lot, that's a lot of water that the um, pipes and inlets have to handle. So resilience planning is very important. Um, a resilience planning that takes into account future increases in precipitation and the future areas of flooding is very important. And everybody needs to understand and identify the problem areas. We need to prioritize those and address them. And that's what this document will do. So the development of the resilience planning will include public engagement, community visioning, risk assessment, and scenario planning. And all that will be offered as part of this document and technical assistance. So eligibility for this second one, the resilience planning. Um, I think we're going to be um, prioritizing um, tropical storm Ida affected areas. In fact, um, the technical, the, uh, the offer document that we posted on our grant website includes a list of townships that were declared as emergency um, by the governor for the tropical storm Ida. Um, you have to show us how your community was impacted during Hurricane Ida. We will also be prioritizing overburdened communities. Uh, we like to see a regional approach if possible. Um, if a few municipalities have formed together, uh, um, you know, a region. And for the most part, uh, this uh, grant assistance is available outside the coastal zone. You can still apply, but we would probably be prioritizing inland for this. And we like to see a support and commitment from a community-based organization. Deadline to apply for this is August 24th, and you would submit your letter of interest to resilientnj at dep.nj.gov. Again, no application forms, just tell us how you meet these requirements, and um, we're just going to try to make it as easy for you as possible um, by providing the tools that you need. Um, let's see, the next slide I think is very important. I'm going to try and come back and uh, post some of these links back into this chat session. So this page I tried to put all the important links and information right into this site. The number one is the grants website uh, that was already posted in the chat. Uh, the next one is the utility guidance uh, web page where you can get all the information about the importance of forming a stormwater utility. Now, if you have any questions or you're ready to say, pick me, pick me, you can submit your proposal to our email address, stormwaterutility at dep.nj.gov. Now for the second document, um, the uh, resilient website one. Um, so that's the home page, and questions and answers can be submitted to resilientnj at dep.nj.gov. And if you just have general questions, you can you can contact us at stormwatergradsinfo at dp.nj.gov. And I see a question here about my presentation. Um, I tried to share it in this chat, and I'm having some trouble with accessibility. So I want we're going to post everything on our grants website. This presentation, the recording, my PowerPoint. Um, any updates, like for example, 
I think a few people are asking us to extend the August 24th deadline. So um, all of that information as as we come up with with uh, updates, they will be posted on our stormwater grant website. So that's the main thing you want to have handy and you want to go there and then every document is accessible there. The recording of this presentation will be accessible there. My PowerPoint, everything. So I would now like to hand over the screen to our next presenter, Sherry Presig, who's part of the MS4 program. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm going to hold on. I have to stop sharing the screen. I'll start sharing mine. Okay. Will you do that? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what you're seeing. I hope you're seeing my first slide. We are. We are. Thank you. Okay. No, um, we see the website. Okay. Yeah. Let me get PowerPoint on here. Okay. Just a sec. There we go. Okay. All right. We're good. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Pricing, um, and thank you, Madhu. So, as you heard in the Clean Stormwater and Flood Reduction Act, aka the Stormwater Utilities Act, over 10% of New Jersey's land is covered with impervious surfaces, which has resulted in increased pollution and flooding problems. The act was created to enable towns and other entities to establish stormwater utilities in order to address these problems. Um, and as Madhu mentioned, the department is accepting letters of interest from municipalities, counties, and authorities to work with the DEP chosen contractor who will conduct comprehensive feasibility studies for forming stormwater utilities as a stable funding mechanism. The results of the feasibility study will help you determine if it makes sense to implement a stormwater utility for your given service area, and if so, what fee and credit structure is the best fit. Um, these studies come with a hefty price tag, which is um, because of the time and expertise involved, and that's why the department is offering these technical assistance grants. So let's go through what you need to know if you uh, end up participating in one of these programs. The contractor who develops the feasibility study can't do it alone, so you need to identify a qualified person to act as a liaison. This person will be responsible for providing sound information and arranging um, for the appropriate staff to meet with a contractor so they can develop an accurate assessment of the stormwater program in your service area. The liaison will also need to be available to the contractor and be knowledgeable or know where to find information about the stormwater program and the infrastructure, including any CSO infrastructure, the operations and maintenance needs, permit compliance issues, and the staff and equipment designated to implement the program. The liaison will also need to work with the people responsible for stormwater budget allocations and really needs to understand the stormwater related problems that exist in the service area. Uh, the department has a website with a uh, guidance on stormwater utilities, and if we have time, I think we will. I'll give you a quick tour of it. Um, if you've already taken a peek, then this should look familiar. These are the typical steps that organizations take when they are considering forming a stormwater utility, starting with the uh, discussions of the concept of it and ending with implementation of the utility. Now, you, you may have already done a preliminary feasibility study, which we talk about in step two on the website, where you got a rough estimate of what stormwater projects and problems you need to finance and compared that with the available revenue stream. For this technical assistance grant program, though, we're focusing on the fourth step of the process, which is the comprehensive feasibility study. Towards the end of that comprehensive feasibility study, your uh, liaison will need to assist the contractor to prepare materials to share with the, uh, the decision makers, the stakeholders, community members. Um, there are several ways to set up the utility with different types of rate structures and levels of service. So the feedback that you get from these people are going to help you choose 
the options that best suit the needs of your service area. If the decision is to proceed with a stormwater utility, you'll begin engaging with the stakeholders and general public to educate them and also to earn their support. A comprehensive feasibility study will include an assessment of everything that goes into your stormwater program. So you'll be doing a deep dive into the state of your program as it is now, what you anticipate coming a year from now, five years from now, and well beyond. An analysis of the impervious versus pervious areas at the parcel level is going to be the key driver in determining the fees and credits. This is a huge part of the effort and will probably take the most amount of time. We encourage you to be transparent with the public and solicit their input since, after all, they are the ones paying for it. And as you probably know from other projects in your community, buy-in from the residents and the businesses is really critical for a smooth implementation. The time required to conduct this analysis is going to depend heavily on the size of the service area for the utility. So let's move on to the components of the feasibility study. The consultant will need a thorough inventory of everything that supports the stormwater program. So infrastructure maps are going to be great. Any other asset management tools you use, get them ready. Um, you'll see in the chart we noted, noted um, not just the stormwater facilities like basins and outfalls, but also maintenance yards, buildings, vehicles, and all kinds of equipment. All of this should be included. Um, next, you'll discuss what resources you're going to need for addressing maintenance, repairs and upgrades, permit compliance concerns, and any special stormwater issues that apply to your service area like flooding, HABs, etc. The next task, like I said, is one of the biggest pieces. It's to analyze the amount of impervious and pervious surfaces at the parcel level. In New Jersey, stormwater utility fees must be based on the amount of stormwater runoff a property generates. And according to the act, um, I'm going to quote it, the established utility fees must be based on a fair and equitable approximation of the proportionate contribution of stormwater runoff from a real property, which just means that the information gathered during this analysis is what is going to be used to establish a rate structure for your service area that's fair and equitable. So properties that generate more runoff are going to have a higher fee than property properties that generate a smaller amount. So places like car dealerships or big box stores are definitely going to pay more than your little local diner or other small businesses and residential properties will pay even less. You'll also need to consider what level of service you can provide to the community through the stormwater utility. Depending on the types of stormwater concerns that are in your service area, you may elect just to cover the basics. That's fine. Or perhaps you'll be able to include some projects that go beyond that um, by choosing remediations that don't just fix the problem, but also improve the quality of life and aesthetics for the community. For example, instead of installing gray infrastructure, you may opt to install green infrastructure, like a rain garden, to provide more green space in your community. And in the end, once all the information is gathered, the consultant will crunch all the numbers using different rate structures for you to consider. And from here, you can discuss what the options are to determine, number one, if a, a stormwater utility is the answer, and number two, which approach is the most suitable. Okay, I'm going to switch over. Uh, what I gave you so far is a high-level summary of the process. It would take hours to go into all the details. I'm not going to do that to you. So. Um, Take a look here. I'm hoping my screen switches. Do you see the web page down? Yes. OK, good. So right here on the home page, um, here's some good background that you can share with uh, your stakeholders. There's a link to the law. If you are having trouble sleeping, just click on this and um, you can take a look at that. This explains what a utility does. Stormwater basics. What is stormwater? What are the problems in it? How does it affect me? Um, here's links to find more information about our permits, our MS4 permits, our CSO permits, and scoot down a little further. Um, it talks about what groups can establish a utility. Here's some language straight from the, the law. It explains what DEP is responsible for, and here's a spot where you can tell us what else you'd like to see on this web page. Um, you can also sign up here to get announcements about stormwater utilities, anything that we post you know, you, you can get whatever you want. 
Um, I'm just going to breeze through here. Um, each of these tabs gives you lots of information. This is going to be pretty much what I just said, all the all the steps. And if you just tap on any of these, it'll expand and give you a lot of details. Here's something kind of cool. This um, these links will take you to places that kind of recently established a stormwater utility. You can see what they are offering. This talks about the inventory, all the things I just I just went through. Let me go back up. And um, I'll just show you quick. This is a lot of details on the fees and credits and who's exempt. Um, we chose these rate structures here. There are others, but these are the ones that we use. They're very common. Um, and this goes on for miles and miles. Uh, lots of lots of good information. So that's about the fees and credit structure. This uh, tab tells you what the fees must be used for, what they can be used for, um, and what they can't be used for. So there's, like I said, lots of things you can you can open up and and get into the weeds there. Here's a tab on asset management. Um, we have a lot of guidance about that and things you should be thinking about if you don't have a good asset management program already. Check that out. And here's some resources. Um, our famous acronyms are listed here. Some FAQs and then some some other links you can check out for um, again people who have gone through this process. Um, you might want to pick some people's brains, reach out to them. So anyway, that's the that's the web page. I'm going to attempt to go back to my slides. Do you see my slides again? I don't think so. OK. I'm not sure. You're good, Sherry. We're okay. on the slide. <laughs> OK, it's just how to get a hold of me. If, um, I'm finished with uh, with my little bit. So if you have questions that come up later, you can send me an email or uh, check out our web page here. Give us a call um, or go through the, the links that Madhu offered. All right, I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome. And uh, Megan, it's all yours. Take it away. <laughs> Great. Well, OK, I'm going to share my screen. Everyone is seeing the slides? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what I'm here to introduce is the Resilient NJ uh, 2022 Municipal Assistance Program. The Municipal Assistance Program uh, provides direct resilience planning ass assistance to individual municipalities um, for the development of local climate resilience strategies and or climate change related hazard vulnerability assessments. We currently have five um, towns participating in this program. To give you an idea of what Resilient NJ is, if you haven't uh, participated or are familiar with it, uh, uh, with the program at all. Um, our overall objectives are to assess current and future flood risk from rainfall, storm surge, sea level rise, and tidal flooding, uh, reach underserved populations, ensure representation and participation from socially vulnerable populations, and, co -develop and the co-development of equitable solutions, uh, to identify and assess vulnerabilities of commu community assets, so places, things, processes, services. Um, these are the features of uh, community values, including those things critical to support infrastructure, places, processes, and services that are essential to day-to-day -to -day living um, and, this, and also support uh, the operations during and after a disaster. We use this program also to identify projects that enhance the value and integrity of ecological and ecological, recreational, and economic resources. And we also want to develop innovative and implement and innovative and implementable solutions that increase climate resilience in both the short and long term. So the purpose of the funding uh, for this program is, as we've spoke before, to provide no cost resilience planning support to address uh, stormwater and flooding. These resilience planning projects would identify and address gaps in flood resilience planning, effectuate a robust outreach and, and, and engagement strategy, uh, reach underserved populations, develop innovative implementable solutions, um, and enhance that integrity and, and value of those, uh, of those resources in the region. 
What we're asking here is to, for a request for express interest um, to solicit interest from Ida impacted local governments wishing to engage in this planning uh, to address these issues. Um, the result hoping to be uh, a community led resilience action plan that results in a comprehensive in comprehensive climate resilience. Um, we ask that your community agree to be a committed partner uh, with NJDEP and, an, and the approved contractor to, to fulfill uh, and designate and designate that um, they have the staff and capacity to actively participate in the process. So we've spoken about our eligible municipalities. Um, we are this program is open to counties and municipalities that were identified as most impacted and distressed uh, due to the remnants of Tropical Storm Ida. Um, and we also ask that you have not previously received funding through the Resilient NJ Regional Resilience Planning Program or any other municipal assistance program. Um, municipalities may join, may apply individually or as a region. Um, we ask that if you are, if you do decide to join as a, uh, apply as a region, um, that is a joint submission. Um, and we also do like to define a region of at least uh, a minimum of three municipalities that share uh, some sort of municipal border. Um, all of the eligible municipalities and counties are available in Appendix A of the request for express interest. Um, there are about 298 of you, um, and that's separated out by county. So um, this also can be cross county. Uh, if you work with your neighbors, if you share that kind of border as well, you can uh, apply together that way. So our funding priorities, um, of course, we want you to, to be able to set, show that you have had demonstrated impact from Tropical Storm Ida. Um, they have the inclusion of overburdened communities. Um, we are prioritizing region, uh, a regional scale process, but that is not to say that we won't be able to uh, look at individual uh, projects. Um, municipalities outside of the New Jersey coastal zone are, are going to be prioritized. Again, if you have a region of more of, you know, a few of you working together and one of your towns is in the coastal zone, please do not uh, stop that from uh, stop that from you from you uh, applying to this uh, to this to this program. And we also like to have um, a demonstrated support of community commitment from a community based organization. We have found in our current projects going on that is very important and vital to uh, a community led process. Um, having a good partner that can reach out to your citizens uh, beyond the local government. So uh, lastly, this is a, a lot a lot of words on the slide, but just to try to give you an idea and this is all listed in the request for express interest. Um, we would ask you to uh, provide a written uh, letter of interest, uh, giving us a narrative scope, explaining resilience planning activities uh, in your municipality or your region that you're interested in pursuing and potentially any work that you've previously done. Um, if you can provide a, a record of any preliminary studies or inventories and assessments, that's always helpful. Um, helps us plan the project, helps us know what, what kind of jumping off point where we are starting from. Um, we ask for a signature of an administrator, executive officer, or ranking elected official um, from, from your entity, um, and also the people who would be participating in the process. This is, uh, so it's, it's community led, it's very hands on. Um, we like to make sure that we have people who are available to participate um, to get you the best uh, product possible. Um, and so all of the required submissions are due by Wednesday, August 24th, and you can email them to resilientnj at dep.nj.gov. Um, and you can also send us any questions you may have about that. Um, so the eligibility criteria I just want to say is listed in section three of the request for express interest uh, if you need to see any of that in more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. So um, you can you can stop sharing the screen and uh, if any of you have questions, we can take a few questions. Uh, please post them in the chat. And we'll go from there. OK, the first question is pretty easy. <laughs> so how did we select the professional consultant? Uh, we went through. Um, 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 you know, we went through the right Megan. It was a resiliency um, planning and uh, these consultants 
were pre-selected through this bidding process so that we can then um, hire them a lot easier. We will go through some sort of a mini bid process in order to select from one of the six people. Any other questions? So my question is the any uh, from Newark, any consultant which is out of the stream of the four or five that is already approved by NJDEP, they are not going to be considered. Um, I didn't understand your question. Can you? My repeat question that? is any consultant which right. is outside your list of approved. Okay, okay, yeah, no, they, won't. they cannot. Okay, okay. got it. Thank no, you. The, these people are pre-approved. And we have a understanding on the funding mechanism and it's a lot easier for us and we don't have to go through this gigantic bidding process. Gotcha. That's, okay. that's the issue. Thank okay, you. Let me, uh, if we want to do a regional approach, how do we go about doing this? Um, can one letter be sent on behalf of all the participants? Uh, yes, we can get one letter on behalf of all the participants and um, but we definitely need to know the names of uh, the the lead for each of the each of the if it's three municipalities we need to get the name and contact information for the leads for each of the municipality next question how are the pre-qualified consultant teams assigned to the applicants for technical assistance um we are going to go through a mini bid process uh, among the six people and based on what we get and our level of comfort, we will then assign um, the consultants to the different entities. It might be one consultant for everybody or it might be multiple consultants uh, split up among the, um, the winning uh, entities. Uh, next question is, what is the timing to receive the assistance. Well, it's kind of a little bit loose right now. Right now, you need to keep in mind the August 24th deadline. You need to um, you need to show your expression of interest during that time. We received multiple requests to extend this time, and we have not made a decision to do so, and we don't have a time frame as to when it would be extended, if it's extended. But I think we're going to require uh, about a month or so in order to go through our mini bid process. But definitely all of this um, should start very quickly within the next uh, two to three months or so. We should be ready to get started with this project. The next question is, is it OK to apply for both opportunity Yes, it's it's absolutely OK to apply for both opportunity, but just not if you already received funding under the um, resilience, um, any one of their opportunities that were posted before. Uh, next question is, if a utility is already working with a consultant, does the municipality now have to drop that consultant that they're already working with and have been working with? I hmm, that's that's an interesting question. I don't think so because we are encouraging people that have already started the utility study and and we want it to uh, progress. But um, I'm not 100% sure I know the answer to that. So you'll have to check back in with us. Um, but definitely we would be some sort of cooperative type of study, I think. When will we know if the deadline will be extended? Um, you will, um, what day is today? Wednesday. Definitely by Monday, we should know whether this deadline is going to be extended, maybe even by end of this week. Uh, we have to make a decision with our upper management on that. Next question. Peer B municipalities that were recently notified of A assignments. Okay, the question is there is a question about uh, the short deadline 
and to respond we you know like i said we're planning to extend it but right now we're not anticipating a second round of assistance now what we might have is other uh, grant funding opportunities for tier b municipalities and tier a municipalities um, our plan right now is to roll those out in the next month we're still trying to get the funding secured right now and once that's secured uh, we might actually have some grants available both for tier a municipality that might be a smaller pot and also for tier b's who will now become tier a that would be a little bit bigger pot so look out for those opportunities we'll definitely be doing one of those um big email blast bell delivery to all the key individuals just like we did now but i think that would be of a really big help to the b municipality uh when will oh when are we going to make the decision on extension i covered that okay another question about uh, pre-existing relationship with their consultant and our approved consultant that you know we have to we have to really think about that i we i have to tell you we didn't think about that but we'll we'll uh, get into that is there a threshold for the minimum number of residential properties impacted by the storm to apply for this grant megan there's no limit is there no there's no limit Okay, here you go. Um, would a regional transit organization already working with a consultant with a project be eligible? Um, yes. No, right? Make, oh, you're talking about the resilient NJ contract. So for the resilient NJ contract, uh, would a transit organization be eligible. Megan, I need you to take that question. A regional organization could, could work with it, but they wouldn't be able to be the, uh, the only people who can apply for the for the okay. grant are municipalities um, counties, uh, and, right. and counties, uh, but they could potentially be participants in the process. Yeah, they could work with the municipality that they're in. Mm -hmm and apply with with them yeah um or the four where are me are the four regional teams currently working with pre-approved consulting in the new jersey eligible for the stormwater utility grants i think that's another question for you you see that question, Megan? Four I regional. Yeah, I think um, what James is getting at is we have four regional teams uh, with municipalities participating in the that program. They would not be re uh, uh, eligible for the municipal assistance program, but I think he's wondering if they're eligible. F would they be eligible for the stormwater utility grants? Utility grants. Um. Yeah, I don't. The regional teams. What is a regional team? So our regional teams, we have uh, four larger regional projects in Resilient, Resilient New Jersey um, okay. that are that take up 24 towns. Um, oh, yeah, so, sure. Yeah, yeah, Those, definitely. Yeah, you would definitely be eligible if you are part of the regional team. You would definitely be eligible for the stormwater utility grants. Our CSO communities be a priority to receive the grant yes i mean i don't think we listed it as a priority but we would definitely you know take that into consideration okay next question is are we coordinating with new jersey highlands council um what's us we did um that's a good point 
I will definitely reach out to the Highlands today. That's a really good point. We should have, we should have, I um, mean, this is a general posting. I'm kind of sure that they look at all these. In fact, I we have a meeting with Highlands coming up next week. Um, I'll definitely bring it up during the meeting, but it doesn't hurt for me to reach out to them today and just let them know. But thank you for that. The next question. Does the resiliency program eligible municipality list align with the FEMA list? Um, yes, right to the point where um, the ones that are uh, non coastal areas. We did we didn't get the list from FEMA to an extent. So they do. Um, I think I got all the questions. Hope I didn't skip over any. Um, okay, here's another one. When will we know about the decision about communities who are already working with the consultant on a stormwater utility feasibility study? Oh, that's from uh, NJ Future. Um, you're looking for a decision from us about who we're going to select. I mean, we asked when people make an application to us, they have to uh, tell us what studies that they've done already or how far they're, they're committed to. So we'll get to review the study that they submit. And, and um, that's how we'll know. I hope I answered your question. Could I uh, expand on that? So, uh, not Bree, obviously. This is Andrew Phillippe in, in Princeton. Um, but we have already started the process of uh, implementing a feasibility study that happens to be with a consultant who's not on the pre approved consultant list. Um, we were expecting this to be a, a grant program that would help us continue in later phases of our existing study. Um, but it sounds like our only option is to finish our study early, not continue on into our following phases, uh, and then kind of hand over the project to the DEP to you now create a, a different study using a different consultant. It seems like it would be easier for us to continue to work with our existing consultant and to continue with working within the phases and scope that we've already set up for our project. I, I think now I'm the third person who's kind of mentioned this yeah. idea. We're not the only ones who have already started a feasibility study. Right. Uh, is right. there going to be some sort of funding available through this program for us where uh, it doesn't make sense to completely stop our program and then resume uh, with DEP holding the reins and working with a different consultant just because we've already gotten so far in. I hear you. I, I definitely hear you. And this is a talk um, that we need to have in house. And we definitely need to uh, figure out how we're going to handle that. But uh, definitely we, we will be taking that into consideration. Yeah, I think I think everybody, there's a lot of people here who have concerns about the consultant that they're already working with who and you don't want to stop with that consultant and go on to a new consultant we hear you we'll look into it so mr walter lane you don't want to post a question do you want to ask it Yes, yeah, sorry, I don't have access to the chat box. So Walt Lane from Somerset County Office of Planning, Policy and Economic Development. I just had a question for the either resiliency uh, planning grants. Um, if the county was to submit, what kind of community group do you want us to indicate that we would be partnering with or have part of the team if it's a, it's a countywide proposal? So that that sort of is, uh, it's up to you we've we, we've had um local more local groups within um 
within different municipalities. We've had larger groups like a YMCA or American Red Cross participate. Um, so it it really is up to you. It's 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 more or less about demonstrating the fact that uh, that that community based organization you know is can has a, a good outreach to the municipalities that you're working with, um, and that they're very active um, and they'll be very active in the process. Okay, so it would be like a, a countywide chamber of commerce, or like um, we work with Healthier Somerset, which is doing community health planning, which involves all our towns. I mean, our county has very good relationships with all our municipalities and work with them on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. I think you know our application, if we were submitting something, it's in, you know I think we can demonstrate how we work with all our municipalities. I just don't know if there's a wide a, a community a county wide group that would be in this other than something like there is a sustainable Somerset committee as part of the Chamber of Commerce that deals with these types of issues um, to demonstrate a, a, a you know county wide group. I think I think as long as they have they can potentially have outreach within the municipalities themselves mm -hmm. and I understand what you're saying they may not generally I think I understand what you're saying they may not generally um, be known as a county wide base group, but if they're willing to do the outreach to the municipalities that you're entering with, then okay. that is definitely, uh, that's the important part. Okay, thank you. Sure. I had another question here, um, something to do with, are the consultants working for the DEP directly, or are they gonna be working for the municipality? The consultant will be working directly for the DEP, and we will pay them the funds directly. Uh, no money will pass through to the township. That's how it was envisioned. Right. If anybody needs to leave, feel free to leave. Um, I can hang around for a little bit longer if there's more questions, but it seems like the questions have stopped. Um, I just want to thank you all very much for coming and showing interest. I'll hang around for a little bit if you have any questions. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care. Oh, I have a question here. Where is the list of impacted uh, municipality. It's in the document that we posted on our stormwater grant uh, website. So in this chat, we gave you the link to the stormwater grant website uh, in many different places, I think at least three times. Go to that website and then and then you'll have a document that shows all the documents and the the one for the resilience. Uh, the last couple of pages contains um, all the municipalities. Uh, somebody's asking about a replay of this meeting. Yes, it's being recorded and it will be posted on the Stormwater Grant website along with a copy of uh, the three PowerPoints. Permission to speak instead of uh, typing since there's less sure. people on the chat right now. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, my name is Eleni Janakopoulos. Um, Brian uh, knows me and has heard of me presenting on the topic of stormwater utilities from New Jersey Future. Okay. I'm a consulting engineer with the state of New within the state of New Jersey. Um, we've had so anyway, for the most part, our clients that we were, I'm trying to put my hand down and I'm being distracted with my own um, technology here, but we have had several clients that we represent that need a stormwater utility. They need a revenue source to address stormwater needs. Increasing taxes is not the answer. 
We've been advising our clients to wait it out through Governor Murphy's and Commissioner LaTourette's advice that there will be money coming in uh, for exactly what you're presenting today. Having the list, I understand we want to work smarter, not harder. So you have $3 million. You want to have select pool of engineers that you're going through the checklist of what you require to submit. However, it is the masses have spoken in today's training. I guess uh, one thing that I could recommend in the suggestion box is to go through a second round of RFPs and either expand the pool so that those of us representing numerous municipalities that have been, you know, we've been advising them hold off, wait until the money comes in. Um, it's just we have established relationships with clients for a long standing period of time through IDA. Even before Ida, we have data that we have been saving in GIS for them, waiting for this opportunity to get some financial assistance to help them through this. Yeah. Um, it just it, it seems somewhat counterproductive in that regard, although I see your point of efficiency in having the pre qualified list. Um, but we really need to kind of meet halfway. We were recently awarded a project to uh, assist the city of Camden uh, for a feasibility study. Um, I don't want to see them not be eligible for this because we're not on the qualified list um, and several CSO community clients that we have um, as well. So okay. that's just summarizing the questions that I've seen in writing, um, trying to understand our position and how this is becoming somewhat of a of a of an obstacle. OK, I hear you. I totally, totally hear you. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. And somebody in the chat wants to know who you are and your contact information if you want to. Sure, yeah, again. I'll add it to the chat. OK, thank you. Thank you. But I definitely hear you. And we'll see how we can address that. OK, I think. We're at the end and with that, I would like to uh, close out the meeting. Take care, everybody and have a good day. Bye-bye.